Well, everyone, uh, meet Dr. Kent Brantley, uh, who will soon be uh, one of the newest missionaries supported by our church, along with his wife, Amber, and he'll be joining his cousin, uh, Dr. Stephen Snell and Amy, and we know Stephen and Amy, they've been a part of our church for a long time. And uh, although many of you may not have met Dr. Brantley, I know most of you have heard of him. And uh, I want to take just a moment, Kent, to explore your story a little bit and your witness. And it starts, you grew up in Indiana. You yes. grew up in a house of faith. I'd like just to ask, when did you uh, sense uh, a call to follow Christ? When did you sense a call to pursue medicine? And when did you sense God saying those two were going to go together? I was pretty young. I was nine years old when I came to my nine-year-old realization that I needed to decide for myself to follow Jesus. Okay. And um, I was blessed with the examples of my parents and grandparents and older siblings who were living the lives of disciples uh, in front of me. Um, the truth is I was a biblical text major at Abilene Christian University. Okay. And I got near the end of that degree, which was wonderful. I don't regret it. I would, I would choose it again. But I knew that I was not a preacher, didn't feel equipped or prepared to be a teacher, wasn't sure I was ready to go on to seminary or graduate studies. But I had begun during college to feel God's call on my life to serve as a missionary, whatever that term meant. Mm -hmm. And so it was near the end of college that I told my parents, I think I want to try to go to medical school oh, wow. because it seemed like I, I needed, I needed a tangible skill set to serve people, mm -hmm. to, to tangibly express the love of Christ to people. And medicine seemed like a, a good way to do that. So I told God, I'm going to try to walk down this path. And if, if this is what you have for me, if you'll open the doors, I'll walk through them. Okay. And did you know Amber at this time? Amber and I met the, the summer after I made that decision. Okay. And so she, she was on board with you going to medical school. Well, she was, she was in nursing school, uh -huh. and she taught me how to check blood pressure. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've been a great team, and you go to medical school. You become Dr. Kent Brantley. Uh, and tell us then the process that led you to decide to take your family, uh, go to Samaritan's Purse, and do medical missions in Africa. So from the beginning of my path down medical education, the purpose was to use those skills in service to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the plan all along, and that has been at the foundation of mine and Amber's relationship from the time we met on that medical mission trip in Honduras. So that was, that was where we were headed all along. And we met the people from Samaritan's Purse at the Global Missions Health Conference in Louisville, Kentucky. It happens every November. We met them there and learned about the post-residency program, which seemed like a really great way to get started on the mission field, to be mentored by another experienced medical missionary for the first couple of years on the field. Okay. Well, the first time many in listening now heard your name was when you were in Liberia and you contracted the Ebola virus. Uh, I know that's a hard thing to revisit, but if you don't mind, when you learned that you had contracted Ebola, what went through your mind and how did your faith uh, sustain you or guide you in the days ahead? My first response when, when my friend standing outside my window told me that my test was positive for Ebola, my first response was, from my doctor mind. Okay, what's, what's next? What's our plan? What are we going to do? And then I immediately thought of my wife and my children who are back here in Texas. And I said, how, how am I going to tell Amber? Um, that night, as I called my family members and told them the news, I identified a lot with the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm those three young Hebrew boys who were told to either bow down to the idol or face a fiery death. And I wasn't facing some threat from a maniac king, but I, 
I had sought to be faithful to God to the point of moving my family to a faraway country to serve people. And just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king, our, we know that our God can save us, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to that idol. I knew that God could save me from Ebola, but even if he didn't, I did not want to be the guy who was faithful to the point of taking his family to Africa, who then gave up in the end because he got sick. I desperately wanted to be faithful to whatever the end would be. And, you know, watching from a distance, praying from a distance for you, uh, we watched as you and Amber lived that and your faith was constant and uh, it inspired us and I thank you for that. And then you had a decision because when you did uh, get well, uh, you had this platform you had never asked for and you could keep practicing medicine or you could use this platform uh, to, to good, to, to redeem your illness. And so walk us through that season of your life. Just as we had, it, it was like we, when we set out to Liberia, we told God, we just want to tell people about you. And it's as if God said, oh, really? Here, try this platform. Try telling millions of people about me. Um, and so we, we felt really a sense of responsibility to, stu to be good stewards of the opportunities that were now being presented to us. Uh, and that meant being advocates for the people of West Africa, calling on the international community mm -hmm. to step in. But it also meant being faithful to the opportunity to remind people that we have to choose to respond out of compassion rather than out of fear. Mm -hmm. That we have to recognize that the people on the other side of the world are not the other far away. They are our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And Jesus gave us the command very clearly, love your neighbors as yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and so we sought to be faithful to those opportunities and, and spent a good part of, of the next three, year, three mm -hmm. years or so um, doing a lot of traveling and public speaking, mm -hmm. trying to to share those messages. Yeah, and I really want to commend you for being faithful to that opportunity because I know it's not your first choice to be <laughs> in front of people and having people give you attention, but I do think God did give you that opportunity and I do think you stewarded it well. The last several years, what have you been doing? So in 2015, the end of 2015, I went back to work as a doctor in Fort Worth. And so for the last four years or so, I've been working at John Peter Smith Hospital, taking care of patients and, and training young doctors and training there in family medicine. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, along with the Stales, you and Amber plan to go back to Africa, this time to Zambia as medical missionaries. Tell us a little bit about what you will be doing there. We will be joining with Stephen and Amy to work at Mukingi Mission Hospital which happens to be where they lived from 2013 to 2015 uh -huh. in that same Samaritan's Purse program. So we will be joining the staff at Mukingi Hospital to serve. We, we like to look at it as we, our job, our calling is to care for the poor, to have compassion on people in need, and to participate in the coming of God's kingdom on this earth. And we're going to do that in the setting of rural Zambia in a 200-bed regional hospital where I'll be taking care of patients, all, all kinds of people with all kinds of problems uh, in a place where medical care is hard to find. Okay. Well, I know this next question is going to make you feel uncomfortable because I've heard you say that especially during your time with illness, you were the one who was served. But the reality is you do have a skill set uh, that could afford you a very comfortable life. Uh, you have the capacity to live a very self-serving life. And nobody would think less of Dr. Kent Brantley if he never went back to medical missions, but you are. And so I just have to ask, what motivates you to, to serve and to use your gifts this way? Rick, God, God placed a calling on our lives. He's placed a calling on all of our lives said the two most important things in life are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. 
our, our desire to go serve in Zambia is because we want to be faithful to that calling that God has given us. And I could leave my clinic in Fort Worth and they would hire another doctor the next day to take my spot. But there are people in Zambia and in so many other places in the world who are dying every day because they don't have a doctor to take care of them. So that's one of our motivations for choosing a place like Zambia rather than staying here. But, but Jesus also called us to pick up our cross and follow him and to make disciples of all nations. And so we want to be faithful to that part of his calling as well, to use our lives in service to, like, I know in August you preached from Micah 6, 8, but you also referenced the parable of the Good Samaritan a whole lot in that mm-hmm. series. And that's what we want to, we want to be good Samaritans. We want to be good neighbors who, who seek out the, the brother in the ditch and help him mm-hmm. or her. And, and taking our family to Zambia uh, is our, our attempt to, to be faithful to that calling, to, yeah. to love our neighbors, to make disciples. Mm-hmm. And you probably feel a little awkward or embarrassed if people say, oh, what a sacrifice you're making. This is, this is where you find your highest joy, isn't it? There's a great quote that I, I wish I could quote the whole thing to you. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but Dr. David Livingston, Mm -hmm. after spending the majority of his life exploring sub-Saharan Africa for the purpose of taking the gospel to people, someone asked him about all of the things he had sacrificed, the family he had lost, the career he he left, and he said, it is no sacrifice to serve Jesus. There you go. That's beautiful, Kent. And I want to thank you for your time. And I want you and Amber to know, along with Stephen and Amy, you will be in our prayers and our thoughts. And we are here to serve you while you serve others.